What's happening guys, this is Double RPG here, and I'm here to present another Two Cents video on the Two Cents block to you all. What's happening right now in the video game world? If you said E3, you are absolutely right. I have been covering E3 since this past Sunday from EA Play to the first hour of the Nintendo Treehouse presentation from yesterday, and the start of Gamer's Christmas has me very underwhelmed even more so than last year. Granted, there are some new games I am very excited for, such as Dead Rising 4, South Park The Fractured But Whole, God of War 4, Days Gone, Resident Evil 7, which I will talk about in another video with delivering my thoughts on the trailer and demo, the new Spider-Man game on the PlayStation 4 being developed by Insomniac Games, but most of all, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the new Zelda game being made for both the Wii U and the NX, and this has been one game we finally got more information on. Maybe not so much with the story, but the gameplay and what to expect on this new journey. Being a big Zelda fan along with many other of Nintendo's IPs, most of you are probably wondering about my overall thoughts on what is shown by far. Seeing the name of the title for this video, I am very obliged to deliver my two cents on what did and did not impress me the most. Let's start off with what I liked about Breath of the Wild at E3, since the bad are mostly just minor annoyances. Probably the number one thing that I am very happy with is the fact that this new Zelda game will be the first in the main series to have voice acting. If many of you remember my Two Cents video where I was going to be even more discontent if the next or future Zelda games didn't incorporate voice acting, then it looks like that crisis for me has been averted. At the beginning of the demo with what Nintendo's shown, Link is woken up to a voice since he is in this liquid stasis chamber inside of a cave, and the voice speaking to him is actually spoken in English from a voice actress and not just text being displayed on screen. I feel that with the voice acting now present, we will finally see a vast and rich storyline being brought into a mainline Zelda game. I have been itching for that to happen since Ocarina of Time, but for them to finally achieve this goal after the recent Hyrule Warriors from two years ago has me even more optimistic about the future of the Legend of Zelda IP going forward. Probably my next favorite thing I like about this new game being worked on is the setting. Of course, with almost every Zelda game, the main setting is going to be in Hyrule. Surprisingly, when you take a look at the beginning with Link waking up from the liquid stasis chamber inside of that cave, you see that the game sports some futuristic sci-fi vibe to some of the dungeons and objects such as the Sheikah Slate because it resembles a tablet being functioned electronically. Now, the Sheikah Slate is supposed to be the representation of the Wii U gamepad and what the NX will possibly sport in its control scheme, but the idea of having some advanced civilizations or even some science fiction elements like high-end technology has me even more hyped for this new change AEG Anoma is incorporating to this title. The mainland of Hyrule will still sport that fantasy outlook, but the Guardians, Trial Dungeons, the Main Dungeons, and the Beginning Cave go for more technologically advanced presentations to the environmental designs of this game. Next up, the third thing I like about the game is the Land of Hyrule. AEG Aonima went on and said that the Land of Hyrule will be 12 times the size and scope than what we experienced in Twilight Princess from over 10 years ago. From looking at the footage of the game, and the past sneak peeks like what we saw during the 2014 Gaming Awards show, I am a strong believer in Aonima's words. Believe me, when you go up a plateau, a roof from a house, temple, or church, or even the peak of a hill or mountain, you can pretty much see how big the elevation is from the area where the water level is to the top of the highest peak of Death Mountain, and you can see the distance between regions and other forms of land within the world. It is that massive. The draw distance even gives off a great hint of that too. The fourth thing which makes me very excited is the gameplay in four areas. The first has to be the exploration. While you have Link traveling normally in the land of Hyrule, you can do all sorts of things such as scaling up walls like Spider-Man, surf with your shield from the top to the bottom of a snowy mountain like what you did in Twilight Princess, chop trees to make bridges or to obtain firewood, glide with a parasail to get surrounded by the depth the game has going for, and gathering resources to keep Link alive with food and active to progress his adventure forward. Every single Zelda game has you collecting rupees to buy items and finding certain resources and breakable objects for certain things such as arrows for bows, seeds for slingshots, and bombs to have them immediately on hand. But Breath of the Wild looks to break away from that tradition by making Link live off the land much more in contrast to all other games. Sure, there will be villages and traveling merchants to purchase items with rupees, but being more survival-heavy is going to have a significant impact to change one's routine with how they play a Zelda game. To me, I welcome that change with a bright and fiery passion. The second aspect in the fourth liking would be the fact of this game acting more like an action-adventure RPG. What I mean by that statement is that there are more than just fighting enemies and bosses, taking for granted from collecting items in shops and breakable objects, and locating more important equipment from dungeons. Remember when I said Breath of the Wild relies more on the notion of making players survive in the wild and live off the land? There's more to it than just collecting resources to heal, eat, or even use against enemies. You can go around the map and collect many different forms of clothing, different variations of weapons, and cook food to make edible items even more stronger in their healing factor like cooked steak. 
The aspect of collecting different clothing has me very surprised than just sticking to standard defaults like village clothes and the traditional green tunic. Collecting different clothing can have benefits and disadvantages when it comes to the weather and the different locations you have Link traverse in. If Link is up on a cold snowy mountain, you may want him to wear warmer gear because having light clothing can make him lose health. Same thing when in a desert as you may want Link to wear something which will keep him from getting dehydrated and thirsty all the time. Weather and the environments will have an even more pivotal role in Link's newest adventure, so relying on what you only have won't be the best route to take when going from beginning to finish. Collecting different weapons has me even more excited, because you can see Link use more than just the traditional knight sword and master sword. He can use a farmer's pitchfork, a moving decapitated arm from a Stalfos, a stick, a wooden club, a wooden spear, a large broadsword like a claymore, and even a wood chopping axe to arm himself for protection. What's an even bigger twist is the fact that the weapons Link will arm himself with can be broken than opposed to just the shields we have seen in Skyward Sword before the Hylian shield is obtained. I imagine the different armor and gear Link equips onto himself can also be damaged when in conflict because you can collect many different pieces of armor that are the same to whatever Link already has in his arsenal. Now cooking is self-explanatory since devouring well-done meals will have bonuses to Link's health, defense, and strength. Time is also a huge factor like Ocarina of Time, the Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess since different and stronger enemies can appear from any time during the day based on the requirements on the clock. Every minute will count as an hour, while 24 minutes will count as a day gone by in Breath of the Wild, so the game will take cue from the Grand Theft Auto games on how they made time go by in that same fashion. Instead of acting like a traditional Zelda game, it'll have bigger influence on both Japanese and Western RPGs in these recent times, much like Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, which Aonuma is very fond of. The third aspect of the fourth liking is the combat. Remember in 3D Zelda games with swordplay looking very standard and traditional like what you would see since Ocarina of Time? Breath of the Wild looks to have more weight to the combat system. Aside from hacking and slashing at foes like normal, a slowdown mechanic where Link can do multiple fast strikes during that state is present, and enemy intelligence can be significant depending on the environment since they will have more living type areas instead of being spread out all over Hyrule. Think of the slowdown mechanic like the Witch Time mode in Bayonetta. It's exactly like that to give more eye candy to the action. Zelda games and their combat had more realism going for them, but having more style to that is evolution than being static, as it adds to the weight of the battles Link will get himself into. Even the different weapons will have pros and cons, like when fighting the normal Bokoblins to the mechanical guardians who can't be killed for the heck of it. Combat is going to be more methodical and strategic than ever, and that is a good change of pace for once. When going to different towns and event points in the game, the story will slowly start to build up with Zelda's whereabouts, Ganon's newest goal to take over Hyrule, which he is once again the main villain for once, thank god, and why Link is in a liquid stasis chamber inside a cave at the beginning. When pondering on these things, they will make us try and figure out if the game takes place in the far future and being the last game in a specific chronological timeline, or if the Link in this new game is the Hero of Time who was defeated by Ganondorf and the timeline led to Hyrule's decline, which picks up in A Link to the Past. I like how the game will build itself from the ground up, instead of there being lore right at the start, because it will definitely put us in the eyes of Link and what is all going through his head during the game. Now you heard me talk in depth about why I like the direction AJ Anoma is going for Breath of the Wild, but what were some of the things I did not like about it? To be fair, there are only a couple minor annoyances. Probably the first annoyance I have with Breath of the Wild is the fact that Link will not be speaking dialogue in this game. I can understand Aonuma still sticking to the tradition with every gamer representing Link and their own actions, but him not speaking with everyone else is more of an underwhelming feeling I have. I am all happy about this game being the first to incorporate voice work into the characters, but Link still remaining silent with just having grunts, moans, and spontaneous expressions has me scratching my head from an evolution standpoint. Granted, this game could be an appetizer to see if the voice work and story will benefit the game's value, and if it succeeds well, then the next console iteration should have Link speak, and not having that god-awful nature Phillips portrayed him in for those CDI games. I honestly believe Link is capable with holding out on his own by having a suitable and outstanding voice actor who can bring in so much style and charisma to the hero. However, it is what it is for Breath of the Wild, but if its voice work and rich story receive critical praise, then it shouldn't hurt for Link to speak in the next console installment to The Legend of Zelda. The second and last thing that annoys me is the fact that this game will be the exact same experience for both the Wii U and NX versions with nothing substantially unique and different from each other. I can understand both games are being developed closely together so they can both launch when the NX becomes available in March 2017, 
But come on, Nintendo. There needs to be something fun and compelling in the NX version than just being a carbon copy of the Wii U version. I just hope for the NX version to have better performance in the technical side of things, like being playable in 60 frames per second than the Wii U. They might go for that in the NX version, but it running the exact same performance like the Wii U version will be a major letdown. Overall, those are my praise and minor nitpicks I have with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. There is no denying the fact that this game looks to be the first Zelda game in a very long time, where I am extremely hyped for it. I can't remember the last time I was extremely hyped for a Zelda game, to be honest. Just the ideology of breaking away from the traditional conventions and past games, while acting more like the original Legend of Zelda on the NES with a gigantic amount of scope and depth, is a great time to be a fan of the franchise since this is the 30th anniversary. It's a shame it won't come out this holiday season but seeing the gameplay shown off for the first time alone is making me feel strongly optimistic for the future of this IP. This is like the Zelda game I have been waiting for since I became an adult. The others I grew up with are all magnificent in their own right, but I am very certain this game is going to surpass Ocarina of Time if it is borrowing inspiration from Skyrim. I can also guarantee you it will be a successful system seller for the NX and as a launch title for the console. The Wii U version will most likely underperform, but this will be a great start for the NX with the game launching alongside the system. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So yeah, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild will be releasing by March 2017 alongside the Nintendo NX, and you know I will buy that game for the system day one. I know I have been giving crap toward Nintendo most recently with not listening to what consumers want, but I am having hope that this game will be the light to shine at the end of that dark hole they've been in with not listening to us. If it's a start, then I'll be happy. I'll also be discussing my thoughts on the game even more when we receive more information with the story, characters, newer gameplay elements, the soundtrack, and the likes when they become available through a Nintendo Direct or a special presentation for the NX. Oh, and the compatibility of the Wolf Link amiibo having Wolf Link act as your dog partner like in Fallout 4? That's pretty awesome too. Anyway, that's enough from me. I now want to hear from all of you. What are your thoughts on Breath of the Wild so far? Do you like the direction AEG Anoma is going for this new game, or are you not in favor of this new direction? If you're not in favor of it, then let me know why. Be sure to rate this video as well as leaving your feedback down in the comments. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button underneath this video, as more support from you guys will mean that more content is coming from me in the future that you won't find anywhere else. Until next time, this is Double RPG signing off by saying Godspeed and Game On Gamers. Thanks for watching.